Hello, once again, my name is Juicy Pat Lucy, and this is when you introduce yourself, Ben. Oh, damn it, yeah, I'm, I'm Ben Ward. <laughs> yes, no, that is not JT Dunn's voice, unfortunately. That is the voice of a British guy. His name is Ben Ward. Maybe you remember him from a couple episodes ago. I'm, I'm sure you do, because you're, like, one of the most high, highest-rated uh, hits on the juicy details. Apparently so, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how that happened still, but maybe it was those juicy details I brought about the, uh... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're much more popular than either of us had thought. Yeah, yeah crazy. That's, yeah, that's good for me, that's good for you, that's good for everyone, because this is the Juicy Details, episode 19, as we are continuing... International month here in January. Truly international today. Absolutely. Nothing more Three different countries yeah. represented. Three different countries. I, know, I actually did not actually think about that beforehand, but three different countries were right on this one podcast. <sighs> Amazing stuff. So, how's it going, Ben? How's your day going? How's, how's life going? Uh, worst back to work this week. First full week after having a few days off over Christmas, so just getting back to the grind. Kind of quiet for like shows and stuff around here as well in January, so there's not a whole lot to do at the moment. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that before to me. Um, like, other than the end of January, independent wrestling is uh, going to be a little bit quiet over there in England for the next couple weeks or so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. At the start, of the month, I think everyone just kind of assumes that nobody has any, you know, no one has Christmas really, so they kind of cool it off for a couple of weeks. No, yeah, definitely. Uh, but you know, it's going to be a big month for you. No, I mean you're making your commentary debut in just a couple of weeks for LCW Roses. I, I correct me if I'm wrong. Is it that's the proper title of the promotion? It is. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the show. Rumble Roses. Roses Rumble, actually. Oh, okay, okay. I, that wrong. I messed it up. Um, yeah. Roses Rumble, which is a play on, like, the old computer game, Roses. Damn it. I'm just confusing myself now. <laughs> uh, it's all good. It's all good. So, but no, that, I'm pretty excited for you. I mean, you know, you're such an expert on women's wrestling, and no, we talked about this in-depthly on the last podcast that you were on, but, you know, you're such an expert in women's wrestling. I mean, what better way to make your commentary debut than at an all-women's show, you know? So I, I bet you're pretty excited about it. Yes, it's going to be pretty fun. Um, like, what are you most looking forward to the show? Do you have a particular match that you're looking forward to commentating on? Um, well, actually, I don't know which which matches I'm actually commentating for at the moment. So, other than the rumble, so. Oh, okay. So, so, uh, with the three of us, we're going to kind of rotate it, so it's you know different combinations for different matches. So I actually don't know which, which matches I'm going to have yet for definite. Okay, I I thought it was going to be like a uh, Jerry the King, Michael Cole, and JBL type deal, where all three of you commentate. I think, I think that's how we're going to do the rumble, but um, I think maybe for the matches we might have some uh, different combinations. So yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. I mean, uh, actually, no, that's probably better for you because at this you no know, first time uh, commentary, you don't want to be doing the entire show. I'm, I'm guessing, so you probably no, want I mean, some breaks. I'd be happy to do it, but we'll see how it goes the first time. You know, learning process for everyone. No, definitely, definitely. Uh, alright, so let's, well, today we have Leah Von Dutch on as a guest. Ben, I know you know her very well, especially after her trips to Europe, and I'm sure we'll be talking about her trips in-depthly with her once she joins us. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've, I've seen her a whole lot of times over here. Not, not so many on the last European tour, but... Uh, I mean, in your own uh, opinion, what makes Leah Von Dutch stand out from um, any other women professional wrestlers here over, well, uh, she's from Canada, but over here in America? 
Well, I mean, you, you only have to look at where she's managed to go in the short time that, you know, she's been wrestling. She she has quite literally been all over the world. So, I mean, she must be doing something right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, brilliant. Quite a guest, in fact, for your, for your international month. Yeah. Given that she is someone that does a, a fair amount of international travel. Well, yeah, I mean, I have down that she's been to um, England, of course. Uh, she's been to Scotland, Germany, and even had a match in Japan only in her second year. So I think like, she, she went to Finland, Finland when she was yes. in Europe as well. So, no, I think you're dead on. She has to be doing something right if she's only... Uh, only been in the business for a couple of years, and she's already gone to five different countries outside of America and to wrestle in. Yeah, I mean, maybe even more. Maybe she'll tell us that she's, you know, been to some other crazy place later. Yeah. So, Ben, let's welcome to episode 19 of the Juicy Details, the ever so lovely Leah Von Dutch. How are you doing today? Hi, how are you? Uh, how's the Canadian weather treating you today? It is freezing cold out here. It's about minus 30 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in uh, Fahrenheit, but it's really, really cold. Um, pretty much everybody's been off of work and school's been shut down, so it's freezing over here. If it makes you feel better, Cleveland is not any better by any means. <laughs> it makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> No, it makes a change for me to be in a warm country for once. Oh, I'd love to be in a warm country. Well, it's not warm, but it's warmer than Cleveland and Canada, so... I bet. I, I would love to fly over England just for the weather right now. Yeah, it was pretty nice the time I was there. I was, I was quite surprised, so I was pretty happy on that tour. Well, Leah, um, the first question I always like to ask on the show is, how did you first become a fan of professional wrestling when you were younger? Uh, well, when I was younger, I started getting into wrestling with, when I was about 12 years old. I was flipping through the channels, and I had spotted Trish uh, Stratus, and then I found out that she was Canadian, she was blonde, and then her feud with Lita started, and that's what really uh, got me hooked into wrestling, and that's kind of what started my whole my whole passion for wrestling and made me want to become a wrestler was was those two ladies. So you would say both ladies inspired you in your career? Oh, definitely. I like to try to take the attitude that Trish Stratus had when she was wrestling and then do the high-flying moves like Lita would do. So I, my style right now, I just kind of try to combine the both of those two inspirations and make it my own. All right, wow, that's interesting. That's good. And then how long after uh, you first discovered it did you decide that you finally wanted to become a professional wrestler and uh, go to a school? Well, I, it was always in the back of my mind. I just didn't think I could actually do it. However, when I went to university, I went to Windsor University, and I went to a school there, a wrestling school there, to see what it was like. And at the time, I was told that I would never make it. I was too fat. I didn't have the look, but I could give them my money anyways. So that kind of lit a fire in me. And then there was an ad on Kijiji for a ring announcer for CCW. And I went there, and I started partaking in, in events, doing ring announcing, refing, selling 50-50 tickets. And that's kind of where the, the beginning started for me. All right, so you started out as a ring announcer, uh, doing, like, backstage roles, taking tickets. Um, uh, yeah, oh, I, yeah. yeah, I did pretty much whatever I could do. I would go to as many shows as I could, and then eventually I found out about the essay contest that Squared Circle and Edge uh, were holding, and, that, and, then that's, and then I applied to that, and, and I ended up winning the essay contest and getting my training through Squared Circle Wrestling. Was there an essay contest that you finally uh, won the right to train? Yes, yeah. Edge, that's how he got started, was he he won an essay contest in the newspaper, so he was kind of paying it forward and thought he would do the same thing. So you had to write an essay about why you loved wrestling, 
And in my essay, it pretty much just said, you know, I'm already in it. I love, because I was also managing at the time, I love getting booze. I love the entertainment aspect. And the top 10 essays got to go to Squared Circle and talk to Edge. And then the the top four had a one-on-one interview with him. And then he chose the winner, and the winner was me. So I get free lifetime training at Squared Circle. Wow. I I don't think I've ever heard that method before as far as training goes. That's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I was really lucky. And I'm also on the the Blu-ray DVD of um, Edge's DVD. I'm on the Blu-ray extras. So that was kind of (laughs) cool. So let's get right into the actual training. Uh, Who were some of your trainers and uh, what kind of things um, did they teach you during your first uh, year or so at school? Well, my I first started out training with Danger Boy Derek Wild, and then our schedules kind of conflicted a lot, so I wasn't training too much, and then that's why I ended up doing the essay contest. And once I won that, I was training with Rob Fuego um, and also Chantel, so Taylor Wild from TNA. She had an all-female class. I also trained with Sean Spears and Tyson Dukes as well. Uh, the first year of training, you know, it was mostly it was all basics. I had to to brush up on my basics, learn all the basic skills, and then eventually, I told them that I'd like to do some high flying stuff. And then we we learned that I I caught on pretty quick, so it was it was a lot of fun. Were you managing like during the time? You you know, were you doing things on the shows while you were training, or, or were you just training and sort of not involved with the shows? Oh, no, I was, I was definitely involved in the shows. I would go to every show that I could. Uh, when I first started, I, I was managing Cody Diener everywhere. He really brought me under his wing, and he taught me everything I know about my heel character I get from Cody Diener. He taught me how to interact with the audience, how to to react to different situations, and if things don't go as, as they're supposed to, to just kind of keep calm and and keep going on, so Cody Diener really had a huge part in my training as well. Do you have a preference of being a heel or a face in general? I enjoy being a heel more than a face. I just find that I get to really get to explore my character as a heel more. And as a face, I find a face more challenging, whereas a heel, I find it a lot of fun and quite easy to get people to hate me. (laughs) <laughs> so, can't imagine why like, that is. <laughs> I just like to to explore my loud mouth heel character. It's uh, I find it a lot of fun and and more room for creativity that way. Good point. Good point. So after uh, you got through training, um, so let's talk about your first year. Or so um, in on the independent wrestling scene in Canada, uh, I've had a couple Canadian get on here before and. They've had their point of view on the Canadian Indian scene. Like, uh, so I would like to hear from your point of view uh, what the Canadian Indian scene is like for you, and like what it was like for you during your first year, and what it's like now. My first year was amazing on the Canadian Indie scene. We had some. Well, they're still like we have a really fantastic group of wrestlers in Canada, and more specifically in Ontario. Um, I've been able to learn from the best, like from the best, like I mentioned before, Tyson Dukes. He is one of the best wrestlers, hands down, in my opinion. He knows so much and he's, it's just amazing to be able to be on shows with him. As well as before he got signed, um, Sean Spears was on the circuit as well. So I had a lot of opportunity to be wrestling beside some great people and the female talent there. When I started out, there was a lot. I found a lot of people, a lot of girls right now have been either getting injured or moving away, which is unfortunate. But um, I was able to wrestle. My very first match was against Cherry Bomb, and she's a really fantastic wrestler. Um, Courtney Rush really brought me under her wing as well. She's fantastic. Um, And, like, there's just a really great group of people and talent in Ontario it's just there's not very much opportunity to wrestle because there's not 
a ton of promotions here. So that's why I do travel as much as I do because I need to get my name out there. Uh, one match I, I, well, one opponent I would like to ask about is, um, uh, Sarah Del Rey, because I believe it was during your first year that you wrestled her twice for <laughs> yeah. the, for the Chikara promotion, and a lot of people consider her possibly the greatest, one of the greatest female professional wrestlers who ever graced the scene, so, um, do you have anything you'd like to say about those matches, about Sarah? Did you learn anything from her during those two encounters? Oh, I definitely did, um... Especially my second match with her. I don't know what it was, but I, that, that match I had with her was the first time I ever felt confident going into the ring because I knew if I, if something didn't go the way it was supposed to, I knew I had somebody so fantastic in the ring with me that she would be able to carry, carry the match anyways. So that was the first time I really got to listen to the audience because I wasn't freaking out as much as I was before. Um, Sarah, she's so safe and everything that she does looks great. So being able to work with her before she got signed and especially my, my first year was phenomenal. I'm so happy I, I got that chance to work with her and I hope eventually I'll get to work with her again. Uh, so let's talk about, about your first time coming into you. The United States for wrestling. When was that, and did you have any trouble, or have you had any trouble um, crossing the border? Uh, I th- wow, the first time I think I went into the states. I'm thinking it might have been for Clash Wrestling in Detroit. I could be wrong, but I think that's when it was. And uh, I find I knock on wood haven't had any like I haven't had any troubles yet. Uh, However, you, you know, I know people who have, so you just, you have to be careful with it. So, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, yeah, knock on wood here. <laughs> uh, so, let's get right into some of your far, far farther international travel travels. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe one of the first times wrestling outside America, outside the U- U.S. or in Canada, was actually in Japan. Yeah, that I got really lucky with that. Um, I, I wrestled in Japan. I was there for about 10 days, and that training in Japan, it was it's so intense, but it was also, it showed me that I can, I can keep up and it was just an amazing experience to to just pretty much get paid to wrestle and to work out. And when I went there, I'm like, yeah, this is definitely what I want to do for my for my career. Was there anyone there with you to you know help you out, show the ropes? Uh, Mia Yim, she got there about halfway through my tour, and then it was also crazy Mary Dobson. It was her first time going to Japan as well, so we kind of discovered that together. And we, we were just, you know, exploring together, but, but Mia, she, she knew her way around, so that was nice to have a vet there. Because the rest of the girls were either from Mexico or from Japan, and the language barrier, you couldn't really talk to them that much, so it was good to have those two American girls with me. I think you, had, you actually wrestled a match against me, um, and Crazy Mary, right? Yeah, the Three first time. <laughs> Pardon me, sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Is it like a, you wrestled in a triple threat match, the three of you in Japan, right? Yeah, yeah. The, I think in I've the, seen it, yeah. The first time I wrestled, I wrestled um, a Japanese girl was actually in Canada. So I, it kind of, I did want to wrestle a Japanese girl in Japan, but um, that match that I had with Crazy Mary and Mia Yim was great. I, I had a lot of fun, and you know the audience is so different. And quiet, but it was still, it was, it was just something different that I've never experienced before, so it was, it was a lot of fun and I, I enjoyed it. I hope to go back sometime soon. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, that was actually gonna be my next question, so thank you for answering it. <laughs> I was gonna ask if you would have, it, at the chance, like to go back to Japan. It sounds like you would. Oh yeah, definitely, for sure. I'd love to go there. 
And Is then... there any Japanese wrestlers in particular that, you, that you'd like to have a match with? Um, I would like to have a match against Kana. I hear nothing but great stuff about her, and I've been watching a lot of her stuff, so hopefully, whether it's in Japan or not, I'd like to wrestle her sometime. Yeah, I mean, she, she's a pretty frequent visitor to the to North America, so may, maybe it can happen in uh, in the States, if not in Japan. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure she could teach me a lot. <laughs> and then it was last year, I almost said this year, keep forgetting it's 2014, it was last year that you took an extensive tour, or actually might have been two tours, correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong, of Europe. <laughs> Yes, it was two tours. All right, so yeah, let's get into that. Um, let's talk about some of the promotions you work for, some of the other female competitors you work with. Um, I, I believe you went to like four or five different countries, all in both tours. So I would love to hear about your travels there. Yes. Um, so I went on two tours, and they were actually both thirty-five days in length. Um, the first tour, I was based out of Scotland, so I did a lot of Scotland promotions. Um, and then the second tour, I was based in England, but I also ended up going to Finland and Germany. I've been able to work with a lot of great promotions. One of my favorites I worked for is EAW, and I also enjoyed working Pro Wrestling Eve. That was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, on my second tour, I didn't get to go on a show with them, but um, hopefully hopefully when I'm back next time. Also, IPW UK, TAW. Um, in Germany, it was DAW, and I got to wrestle Shelly Martinez. I just, I love it over in Europe. It's by far the best place for, for me. I love wrestling there. Um, the girls are great. I get to wrestle new girls. I had a chance to go and wrestle on title wrestling for British bombshells, and that was a lot of fun. Like, all of the shows I did have been fantastic. The promoters have been great. The girls have been great. And uh, I can't wait to go back. <laughs> Do you have a favorite opponent from over here in Europe? A favorite opponent? Yeah. Um, I really enjoy working with Viper. She was a lot of fun. Me and Shanna, we've clashed a couple of times, so both over in the states and in Europe. So she's a she's a great op- opponent. She's uh, she's feisty, <laughs> but she's she was great. your tag partner as well at one point. So pardon me. Oh yeah, yeah. The, my very I first didn't last match, too long, but yeah, my very first match in in England was I was a, a tag partner with Shanna, and then the next match we were. We were opponents, and we've been opponents ever since. So, yeah, like, a lot of the girls are great, and I really, really, really want to wrestle Nikki Storm. So I was kind of disappointed I didn't get to wrestle her yet, but hopefully in 2014 I'll be able to. Is there anyone from the European scene that you think should be the next one to come over to America for for a couple matches for a trip? Um, I would love to see the Owen twins come over here because we don't really, we don't have, you know, any twins that I can think of. So, other I than think the ones the, on TV. Pardon me. Other than the ones on TV. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I think the Owen twins would be great over here, as well as Kaylee Ray. We had a great match. We had a a hardcore match. So I think that would be Kaylee Ray would do really well over here. Uh, again, Viper. She. She has a look that nobody has over in North America. So, yeah, those those are just a couple of the girls anyways. And, and I got to say, you've only been wrestling for, give or take, 30 years now, <laughs> maybe less. And th- the fact that you've gone to, like, six different countries in the span of that, th- it says a lot about you. It's pretty amazing, and I'm sure it's... it's like surreal for you too. Yeah, it definitely is. I've I've actually I've wrestled in seven countries and I've been wrestling for for two mu- or two years and three months I guess it is. So I'm pretty proud of that. I hope to get three more countries under my belt in 2014 so I can, can you name all the countries that you've wrestled in because me and Pat were trying to think of them before we started and I don't think we got to seven, so 
Well, I wrestled in Canada, in the United States, in Japan, England, Scotland, Finland, and Germany. I did. No, we did get them all. You probably just just forgot to include Canada in it. (laughs) And U.S. And the U.S. Yeah. (laughs) But still, that's quite the lineup there. Quite, quite the resume. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that, and I've worked really hard. You know, sometimes I get comments from other wrestlers saying, you know, things are just handed to me. However, I've really worked my butt off and, and put myself out there. So I'm, I'm proud of that. No, no I believe it. Um, are there any other countries that you would like to visit, like to go to, to wrestle in? I would love to wrestle in Puerto Rico, in Mexico, and in Australia. Those are probably my top three right now. And Costa Rica. <laughs> like, I want to wrestle in the hot places. <laughs> I'm sick of this cold. All those places sound good right about now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, so you've only been wrestling for two years, three months... It's such a young, young career right now. Where do you see yourself five, ten years from now? Do you have any ultimate goals for yourself? I want to be in the WWE. <laughs> that is my, that's where I want to be. And hopefully I will be there in five years, if not before that. Uh, now what about TNA? If they ever called you and want to do Perhaps like a one night deal like they done with Cherry Bomb or Cannon's Larry. Would you ever jump at that opportunity? Oh yeah, definitely. I'd love to work for them as well. Um, yeah, if they called, I'd definitely be be up for that. Their knockout division is fantastic. Oh, it's definitely a great division, but I I feel like it's they can use more women for sure. So, and, and if they called you up, I I think that'd be a great fit for you, for them, for all of us. Me too, I agree. <laughs> uh, well, alright, I think, well, Ben, do you have any, um, more questions up, up your sleeve? I don't know, seeing as you kind of stole some of mine, um. Yeah, I did, I did. Guilty as charged. Let me see, I mean, I asked if there was anyone Japanese who you'd like to face. Is there anyone left, sort of? on the indies in America that you'd like to face that you haven't had a chance to wrestle yet? Um, I would love to have the chance to wrestle uh, Mercedes Martinez. She Every match of hers that I watch is just fantastic. Uh, and also I'd love to wrestle Saran Knight, even though I know she's not from the States, but she does come down a lot. I'd love to have the chance to wrestle her as well. Um, those are probably the top two on my list right now. So the three people you'd want to wrestle is... Kano, Mercedes Martinez, and Sarai Knight, who are probably three of the scariest people I could think of. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> they know, you know, they know what they're doing, and yeah, I, yeah. I just, I can learn so much from them, um, because that's the only way you get better, is by, exactly. by wrestling people who are better than you, so I would love to have the opportunity to do, to do that, even if, even if they do scare me a little bit, but... <laughs> That's not the point. The point is I want to learn. <laughs> no, yeah, all three males are scary, but they're they're great at what they do, and and I think you could learn a lot from all three women. I, I would love to see all three matches sometime in the future, definitely. Well, well Leah, um, is there anything else? Uh, I I before we wrap this up, is there anything else you would like to say? Is your time to plug anything you? Like to Twitter, Facebook, anything, or where people can find you in the next next couple weeks or so. Uh, yes, you can uh, find me on Twitter at Leah Von Dutch, as well as on Facebook at Leah Leah Von Dutch. I am starting to reach the max on Facebook, so add me while you can. Um, also, if you're interested in getting any T-shirts, you can go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Leah Von Dutch. And you can listen to my Wicked theme songs at leahvondutch.bandcamp.com. And also watch my LVD TV. It has, um, it has, I pretty much just took videos of my tour, of my latest European tour. So if you're interested in, in seeing what I went through and 
uh, take a look at LVD TV. So, yeah, those that's what I've got. <laughs> All right, all good stuff. Leah, thank you so much for taking time and joining us for this interview. And, and Ben, you were a great co-host. Thank you for coming on, too, and filling in for JT Dunn and being a part of International Month. Is there anything else you would like to say before we sign off? No, just thanks for having me. Better, better than watching TV on a Tuesday night, so. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Uh Thank you both for joining me today on the GC Details. Thank you to anyone, everyone for listening. Uh, I, for Ben, for Leah, I'm GC Pat Lucy, and thank you for listening to the Juicy Details. Thanks. <laughs>